My name is Manuel Kolsky, uh -huh. and I was born in 1914, 828, 1914. My parents, my father was a, a textile worker in the factories. Yeah. Okay. He put up the he, he put up the uh, the patterns for the for the for the, for the cloth. We had a nice. We had a nice living in Poland. They were a big city. There were three, 600,000 uh, people in the city. There were 350,000 Jews living in the city. That 50% Jews lived in that city. When I was, uh, then when I grew up, I went to the army. I was two years in the army. And when I came home, a year later, the war broke out with Germany. So I was mobilized, and I went to the German army. And this was uh, about uh, six months before the, before the start of the shooting. We made preparation for the vacation. I went to the arm, to, to, to the war. Mm -hmm. I remember when, uh, and we fortified the, the, the borders, but uh, when the war broke out, the fortification was nothing against the German army. We were, a, we were an army from 1914, not 1938, 39. The German was motorized and we were on horseback, you know, little little tanks we have, a few airplanes. No comparison to the German. I I think nobody was compared to, to the German. They were a force. They prepared for years and years. Two weeks we we, we fought. We fought longer than the, the French and then the and the the other countries. They 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 caught me in the in the in a prison camp. I was a POW. You, you know what a POW is? Sure, yes. Uh, prisoner of prisoner of, of, uh, of war. Mm. And I was a year's time in Germany. And then, then they came from Hitler, uh, set, sent all the Jews home, where they come from. So they sent us home, and from home, you know, they couldn't take us to the concentration camp as a, as a soldier because under the Geneva Accord, mm -hmm. they, were, they couldn't do that. They could. Germany did a lot of things against the mm -hmm. Geneva Accord, but this time they didn't. I don't know why. So they sent us home. It was easier to send you home and take you as a civil, civilian. So we, we, I came home. This was 1941. My sisters were already going. My father was sick. My mother was home. My father, my father was sick. He lived about a month after I came home, and he, he died of dysentery. You know, and I lived with my mother. And when I came home from prison camp, the ghetto was already, you know what the ghetto is? Mm -hmm. The ghetto was closed up. And they, uh, they get it was a couple months before I came to from from prison camp. So then I I went to the Jewish uh, committee. They ordered uh, you know, and uh, and uh, we went we went all the all the all the prisoners of camp from my city it was about three hundred Jewish prisoners of camp. We organized. We went to the Jewish. Uh, committee and said, uh, we just came from prison camp and uh, we didn't know what to do with ourselves. We like a job because the ghetto needs people to work. And they, they, they said, right now we don't have anything, but we, if we get something, we, we're going to call you. But uh, then in the meantime, there were police. And they ordered a, a fire engine a fire station, so they need people for the fire, in, for the fire, 
I was a fireman. Uh, we were about, uh, about 300. Every one of them became firemen. And we went to the factories every day in a different factory. You know, there is a, a, a security guard and a fireman. And the factory workers, you know, when they go home, they, they check in, they come in. In, in, in case a fire broke out, so we went sent every day in a different factory. So I was in the, in the ghetto for four years. Then the ghetto, they, they closed the ghetto and they sent us away to, to Auschwitz. People dying like flies. They had 300 or some people in the ghetto every day. Hmm. They was starving for hunger, for cold, you know. And uh, my father died, and I, we didn't have a burial. I and one, one other guy with a, fe a heart and buggy, we took him to the cemetery. We dig a hole, we put him in. This was the burial. Then they, they dissolved the ghetto. They dissolved the ghetto. And they said they're going to they're going to take us to a different camp. I know where we're going because I worked. I had, uh, I had, uh, uh, we were sent to the railroad station where the people were every day. They sent transport to to different camps: the Auschwitz, the Buchenwald, the all kind of camps. And the trains left, and I was at the station. I was say, saying goodbye to the people. And then when the trains were coming back, we used to clean out the trains. And I told the guys who I knew, they were sent away. The last train, if it stopped, put a little slip in, the, in, in this wall and the train inside. And I will read it where, the, where you stopped. So the Poles told us too, they want the, 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 the one carried the trains. The, the engineers who, who provided the trains to the places. When they came back, I asked him, where did you go this time? He said, Auschwitz, Birkenau. He, t he told me the different camps. Then, then we were there in 1945. They dissolved the ghetto, and they told us they're going to take us to a different place. So we know better than that. But we didn't have any other a alternative. So they took us to the train, and they put in five, four, f 50 people in a, in a cattle train. And they took us to Auschwitz. In Auschwitz, we came up, my, my mother and me. And uh, my mother just went right to the guest chamber. And uh, to me, he went to the right. That means living. And uh, we were that transport, I would say, about 5,000 people that time. Uh, about, I, I think the last transport from the ghetto we were. They left about 600 people to clean up the ghetto. They left it. And uh, when we came to Auschwitz, and they took us to, the, to a, a shower, no, no, not the shower. Before they took us to the shower, they shaved us. The whole body, the head and the whole body, they shaved us. And they put uh, some uh, uh, stuff uh, on uh, disinfection, you know. And when they, sha they shaved us, they cut me on the, on the back. And when they put that, uh, that lotion on, it was burning me. When I went to the shower, it washed it off a little bit. When when they took us in the barracks, we were laying on each other on the barracks. And at night, I went out from that. It was a a, a, a tent, a big tent. And when I went out from the tent, and the the German was walking on the other side of the gate. It was electric gate. And he was walking the outside gate. And he asked me, what are you doing outside? I said, 
I'm, I'm in pain. I had a, a cut and they put that lotion on me and it burns me. And, and every, it's hot inside and everybody lays on each other and I'm sweating. He said, you know what? I can help you. I said, why? He said, you, you touch the wire and you'll be over it. Do you understand what he meant? What did he mean? Touch, touch electric wire. Uh -huh. And you get electrocuted, I see. and you'll be over your pain. And, they, and we lived there for, for, for two weeks in that Auschwitz. Mm. Then all of a sudden they said they need people to work. And I always, when they ha I had, you need people, I was over on the go. I didn't want to lay around and feel sorry for myself. Any work, I can get it. It's better than laying, sitting around, you know, not doing nothing and thinking about it. So they sent us, from that they sent us to Gross Rosen. There was a camp. Uh, that, that camp had about 15, 20 other small camps. That they sent us to a small camp. And they took, the, and we had the, a, a quarantine till, till they, we, they sent us to work. And we came there, and we, we, we stayed there for a few months, and then they sent us someplace else, never on one place. And one time, I was there in a, in a, in the, they, they said that they, they sent 10 people to work. A German came over and they said he needed 10 people to work. So my block, the, the guy who took uh, up the block, he said, Manny, we need 10 people to work. Would you like to go to work? I said, yes, would I like it? Sure, I like it. So they took our 10 guys, and the German took us to a small camp. When we came to that camp, in that camp there was a gathering. We came in the evening. It was about 7 o'clock in the evening. They had a gathering. And I asked the guys, what, what, what's the gathering? They said, we have a hanging. Who is hanging who? He said, the father is hanging a son. The father put the news on the son. The son was a little slow. You know what the slow, a little bit off. So when he went to work on the place, he didn't ask the German, he wants to go to the toilet. So the German thought he wants to run away. So he made a report to Hitler or Himmler, and the report comes back, he should be hanged. And the father should put the news on his son. And I said, what the hell did I came to that camp? I didn't have to come here, I told the guys. I said, don't worry, they said, it's a good camp. You get, a, you get a decent soup, you get a decent piece of bread, and you, you're going to work in a, in, a, in a warehouse. You're going to give out shoes and uniform, you're going to have it good. And in fact, it was a nice camp. We had to take a shower. We had a shower, in other camps there were no shower. And um, we had a, a decent soup and a piece of bread and some, sometimes uh, a piece of, a piece of uh, uh, sa uh, kielbasa, you know. And we were there, and then the Russian, we had the Russian uh, coming short, you know. So we, they took us to a dead march from there. We, w we went day and night to the dead march till we come to, uh, we came to Bergen-Belsen. We came to Bergen-Belsen. Bergen-Belsen was the typhus was going on. The people were laying in the street in the camp outside. And the, in Bergen-Belsen, the, the, when, when we were laying on, on a bunk, two people on the bunk, I was laying with a guy. He was from the same city as I was. It so happened that he was from the same city. And we talked a little bit, 
And all of a sudden, he stopped talking. And I shook him, and I saw the guy is dead. So I was there till 19, 1945. Before that, I was there about uh, two weeks. And all of a sudden, somebody came over, and they said, we, we need 500 people to go to Hanover, another city. I said, I'm going to go. So we, we went, 500 people went over to that camp, we marched to that camp, and we had to clean, to clean out. There were a train, uh, an army train was bombed by the, Ameri by the American and by the British. The British bombed at night and the American came on the day. And they bombed the city to, 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 to level up the whole city, Hanover. We, we repaired the tracks, we carried it from one place to another, we put together the tracks. We put together the next day, the American came and bombed again. So they said, you know what, the hell with that, we, ne we don't need anymore. The Germans said to each other, we don't need anymore. And they took us back to Bergen-Belsen, took us back to Bergen-Belsen, and from there I was liberated. It was 1945, in April 14, I was liberated by the British. And, uh, and, and the liberation was a very happy one, but the British didn't know what to do with this. All people were dead. It was, people were, I was in a good shape. So happened that I was, I don't know why, I was in good shape. I, I wasn't swollen up, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we, we, before we were liberated, a few days before, we had to clean. There were a, a one, one, one places where they stack, stack the dead bodies, like pota sack potatoes, high up, and where the where the they had they had that the Russian are close coming, so that's clean start cleaning up the dead people, so they dig a hole about a block wide and about, uh, about 10, 10 foot or 20 foot deep. And they start, in every two person take a, a dead body and took a strap or a piece of rope and, and put by the legs, one leg and each other, and two people carried that about, about 300 feet away from the, from the, from the grave. And sometime a, a leg comes out, something an arm comes out, but the dead body was already, uh, you know, composed. And legs came out, arms come out. So we did this for a few days, and then we got liberated. So the, the British liberated. So the German SS, they, they caught it, running away. They bring them, brought them back. And they they cleaned up this. They didn't carry. They didn't drag those bodies. They carried on their shoulders the dead bodies. And they they buried them. And then they put uh, some kind of stuff on, and they buried it. And I was liberated, so I didn't went back to the barracks. We were five guys from the same city as I was there. And we, we, you know, they, they, they opened up all the, ma all the, all the warehouses when they had people from all over uh, Europe. They had people from Austria, people from Germany, people from Belgium, from, uh, from uh, Norway, and they brought people, rich people, you know, with fur coats, fur coats, and they, they didn't last long. They died like flies but they had the warehouses full with fur coat. So we grabbed a few fur coats, we put up a pen, a, 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 a tent, five guys, we, did, we didn't went into the barracks anymore. We lay outside, they put the fur coats under, we slept under because the, the barracks were infected with typhus. Mm. We left outside, 
we didn't eat for, for we didn't eat for ten days before they liberated. We didn't have the water was poisoned. We had water uh, uh, a, sw a swimming pool for the for the German, so they put poison in before they before they ran away, and we didn't know about it. A lot of people drank the water, and they fell dead, got sick, fell dead. And we I I didn't drink the water, and I didn't eat nothing because pe yeah people, there were Russian prisoners of camp in camp there with us, and they they ate people. A, a, a fresh person who fell dead, they cut them open, they took out the liver, and they fried it on the fire. Did you believe it? When I came back, I remember one time with, with, for, for, to the barracks, my friend was, he, was, he couldn't move anymore, he was sitting there, and he had a bone in his hand and he was eating. I said, what are you doing? What are you eating? He said, a Russian guy, a Russian soldier gave it to me. I said, throw it away, it's a human bone. He said, I don't care. So he didn't, he didn't leave long. He died right afterwards. So they, when the British come in, they didn't know what to do with us. So they gave us the Persians, what they had in their canteens, you know. They, they had uh, all kind of cans, can uh, of uh, uh, beans and peas and corn and, and uh, crackers and peanut butter and, and chocolate. And they gave us, and, and people start eating, you know. They gave us so much, uh, as many, you know, when you're hungry, you take, I'm going to take it forever. So they took a, a, a sack full and they started eating. They, they fell like flies. They fell more than before. So the, 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 the British saw what, uh, what's going on. They said, stop feeding them. And they took all the, all the well, you know, they took out from the barracks and they took them to the hospitals. They, they put them on a, on a on a, on, a, on a liquid diet, and they, they, and they nursed him to, to health. Some died, some, some survived. And we never got sick. We had a little diarrhea, but it, it went away. And we never went sick. And then we went out from the camp, and we went around the city. So the city already, they formed, Jewish committee, and they start organizing, and they made camps, Jewish camps, only Jews, and we lived there. And this is this this how it was. I met a girl, my wife. She was she was living two blocks away from me, from the same city, mm -hmm. but I didn't know her. The city has three hundred and fifty thousand Jews and we lived far away, not far away, and we still didn't know, I didn't know the people from my block. And we, we, I, I, met, I met my wife, and I asked her where she's from, she said, Lodge. I said, where did you live? She said, the street. And I said, I live two blocks away from you. She said, well, I asked her your name, and she told me her name, and I said, I know your brother. So I know her brother. We got married, August 1945, I got married. We traveled around looking for, for family. Maybe a, maybe a sister got, I didn't, I didn't expect my mother to leave because I know where she went. She went right to the crematorium. Mm. <coughs> but my sister, I expected to live. I had two sisters married, they had children. One was single. But uh, I went, I, I wandered all over the Germany, nobody I could find it. Then we went to Poland, and I went to Lodz, and I looked for her, I had to the Jewish organization. There were signs on the wall written, whoever was alive wrote his name, I'm alive, and anybody by that name, call me. 
I looked, I couldn't find my sister. So I stayed there a couple of weeks and I left. I, I, I didn't went into my place where I was living because the people, a lot of people went back to their homes. The Polish people think they come for their possession. So that sometimes they kill them and sometimes they throw them out. But I didn't went there. I knew already what's going on. So I went, we stayed there for a few weeks. We went back to Germany. And that's, that's the way I lived till I came to the United States. In 1949, I came to Pittsburgh, and I left, lived here since then. I didn't, I didn't, be, I didn't went into the nitty gritty because mm. it was too, too painful. I yeah. could, I didn't went into the, you know, the, all the details. Right. But I, I gave you this, uh, 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 I got a gang over, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I practically told you the, what I have on the, on the tape, but the tape is more details because, the, you know, uh, offhand you can tell all the things, you know, but uh, my wife helped me out, I helped her out, so, you know, that's the way it was. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't talk about the, about the, but I, I went through for about 10, 12 years, nothing. If we went, if we come together, you know, survivors came together, they start talking. But I didn't talk about, for strange people, I didn't ever talk, especially to Americans, you know, because they couldn't understand. I, be, I, mean, I don't blame them. Nobody can understand. Sometimes I don't understand myself how I survived, you know. Mm. Because when I came over the first time, when I met some people, some, they started talking to me, and they said, was it that bad? Was it really that bad? Did they, they, they kill people on the street? People were laying dead on the street. Did, you didn't have nothing to eat. You were eating grass. You were eating potato pills. I looked at them. I said, yes, yeah, true. And he said, you know, we had it bad, too. We couldn't eat. We didn't have no beef. We had to eat chicken. You know, he gave me, <laughs> I, 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 I give me, they had that bad too. So he said, did they really gas people? He said, how come they didn't gas you? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, brother, I said, you know, people they couldn't know how they express themselves. They didn't ask me, how did you survive? Now, why did you survive? <laughs> well, I don't believe him. I don't blame him. Nobody could believe that. Sometimes I, I lay in bed and we talked among ourselves. Did you believe what you went through? I thought it was a, a, a nightmare. I still had nightmares every night, practically. Still now? In, right now. Wow. German chased me. You ever, you ever flew in your dream? I flew an airplane by myself to get away from Germany. You ask, you ask me, I believe in God. Practically, I didn't. But when you went, you going on, and you're married, and you have children, and you have to go back to your roots. Well, <coughs> what's in it, you can, you can take it out. Hmm. It stays in you. You see, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, civilize. You can educate it, a brain but you can educate your heart, your heart mm. state. And, uh, how, 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 how am I as a model? <laughs> very well. Yeah. Very good model, very patient. So then, uh, how do you feel about, if I can ask you, yeah. uh, when you see um, a German, a German non-Jew? Uh, I, don't, I don't see no Germans my age anymore. Yeah. Uh, if, I see, if I see a German, uh, uh, what's born after the war? I can have no, 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 no. He, he is not guilty. I mean, uh, father is not guilty for his children. The children is not guilty for his father. You can blame uh, the children, but uh, I, 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 I don't associate with them. You know, I. Uh, 
No, I wouldn't go back to Germany. But, no. This time I said, now I can die. I don't care if I live or die. If I see the end of Hitler, of Germany, I can die. I don't, I don't care if I live or die. You know, the first time I told this story, and I wasn't too emotional about it, because it's something, you know, it's something that you're doing, and I'm watching what you're doing, is that take me away from the, from the sorrow, what I mm -hmm. feel, you know. Okay, well, I'm yeah, happy to hear this that. Is a, this is a, takes off my, I'm 94 years old. <laughs> Could I believe that? I, 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 I live to a 90, 94 years old, and I'm in good shape. Uh, okay. Yeah. So how far you are? I think we are, I'm over there. I'll yeah. show you. I'll go to turn you around it. Mm -hmm. Then you can... Uh, Give your glasses. You need your glasses to see? No, no <laughs> yeah, I, mean can, I can see without glasses. Okay, on. you can. I can, I, oh, it's beautiful. It's me, all right. <laughs> it's me, all right. Yeah, you are a good artist. Oh, thank you. You're a fine artist. A picture's good far away. It's it's me, all right. Yeah, it's like it's like a portrait, you know, like you see. <laughs>